Good morning, church. I think I hear the uh, cone of silence starting to descend, so we are glad to be here, and it's great to have all this visiting going on. If you're visiting with us, we are thankful that you have come our way and hope that you've stopped by our Welcome Center. If not, do that on the way out and get some things from us and hope that you can come our way again. As always, there are orders of worship each week. They are as you come into the building and also scattered on the seats, and so if you need one and, and see one, it's yours for the taking. On the front, the, the actual order of worship, and on the back, a number of announcements. I will mention that we are going to be singing again this song from the inside out. It's printed on the inside of your order of worship, and uh, we will be uh, listening to that, uh, listening to that tape of that being sung. You can sing along with the tape just to help us as we try to learn that song. Several announcements on the back. I want you to be mindful of those, uh, some that aren't there. Remind you that the Allensville singing is coming up, and that's just two weeks from today. If you've never been up to Allensville for that singing, it is, it is really something, and so keep that in mind. There's something special coming up for a, a Father's Day with the elementary kids, and they're going to be in Fellowship Hall on Wednesday, June the 1st. That is uh, next week, not this week. And uh, it says here, do not let the dads know because this is a surprise so just wanted to make that announcement also for our, our seniors ministry if you attended last sunday and you haven't yet returned your survey please uh, get those into blakey bradley or mike hartzell or to the office as soon as possible and if you weren't at the meeting you can have one uh, uh, mailed out to you and just get the surveys in as, as soon as you can that information will be very helpful in helping to reform uh, that uh, ministry. Remind you that there's a housewarming shower that is this afternoon. It's from 1 to 2. It's for Carol Shelton, and it's going to be right in Fellowship Hall. Get in your VBS t-shirt order forms by next week. Baby basket shower is set up for Michael and Madison uh, Mann, and uh, that's going to be being collected through the 19th of June. And we're also collecting things for VBS, and you can look at that bottom block to read more about that. On June the 4th, there is a uh, men's ministry breakfast. This breakfast is for men. It's for males. Uh, bring, bring, bring your sons as well. So it's for all ages, and it's going to be in Fellowship Hall and there's a sign-up on the sign-up board, and that would be helpful in helping us plan for that. My name is Jeffrey Sykes. I preach here, but I get to step back a little bit today and, and, and listen and watch. It's a special day here as we just reflect on graduation. It's, it's unusual in the fact that we have one high school graduate. Uh, it's been a long time since I remember that, but uh, Allie Downs is our graduate, and we are thankful that she's here with her, her parents, as well as uh, uh, Colleen Combs, her grandmother, and uh, Max and Kathy Downs, her grandparents. And so I will mention that all the songs that we're singing today have been selected by Allie, and so that's uh, one place that they came from. And we're going to ask one of our youth deacons to uh, begin with a word of prayer right now, Scott Davis will lead us in prayer. Will you bow with me, please? Dear Lord, I'm so thankful for this day, this special day that you've allowed us to celebrate our youth. Dear Lord, I'm thankful for the leadership here that allows for this participation. Dear Lord, our youth are just our greatest asset here in this church and in every church. And I'm thankful that, again, we have a leadership and a church family that supports our youth. Dear Lord, we know that without them, there is no future in the church. And dear Lord, I just thank you for, again, all the support here that is provided by all the members, and again, by the leadership. Dear Lord, we love them. We want the best for, for them so that they may grow up to be not only good Christian men and women, but the future leaders of your church. Dear Lord, we are mindful that in this day and age, there are many struggles, not just in this country, but abroad, that draw attention away from you. And it is so easy to do. But dear Lord, we just ask that 
you help us, every single one of us, to draw the attention back to those minds, to those young minds, to raise them up, to lift them up, so that they can go out and do great things in your name. Dear Lord, we love them, and we thank you for them, and we thank you for their families. It's in your most holy name we pray. Amen. If you would, let's stand as we sing this, this song. These songs this morning were requests of our high school graduates. So each year we ask the high school graduates to choose us some songs that they like, and this year she got to choose them all. So there you go. These are the days of your life, declaring the word of the Lord. And these are the days of your servant, Moses, righteousness being restored. And all these are days of great trial, of famine and darkness and sword, till we are the voice in the dead.
youth group how proud I am to be a part of this and thank you to Chris and Annie for doing such an incredible job came home this week to 48 kids in my house uh, Wednesday night and I thought this is incredible <laughs> I love this but it has been incredible how we got stronger through COVID and you know even as a kid I worried about having children and the steps that you would go through to make sure that you had believing children. And this step right here, going graduating, is one of the scariest things for me as a parent to think about, that we just allow our kids out. And in this quest, if you decide to go to college, you're basically going to become more knowledgeable or in a different perspective, to become wise. And it's that quest for wisdom that's kind of always put mankind in, into trouble. If you think you go all the way back to beginning, when God puts the tree of life right there in the middle, and the knowledge of uh, good and evil, and there's one tree that they couldn't eat of. And Eve looks at it, in verse 6 of chapter 3, she says, so when the woman saw it, that the tree was good for food, 
that was pleasant to the eye, and it was desirable to make one wise. And I look at what our institute now, and we think, well, we're going to send our kids off, and they're going to become wise. But I don't know what type of wisdom that the world is wanting to instill into our kids. And the wisdom of the Bible, the wisdom of God is very simple. And if you remember hundreds of years or thousands of years later, God gives one, you know, genie in the bottle wish to Solomon as he's about to come into this kingdom. And Solomon asked for wisdom. And God's very pleased with this decision that Solomon has asked for wisdom. And Solomon, you know, starts off good, but he struggles, as a thousand wives would do to you. And he, he, has, he has a hard time, but he, he looks into everything. And he's trying to figure out what, it, what is life all about. And it comes down to a very simple conclusion that he, that he says in Ecclesiastes chapter 12. He said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. And right now what we're doing, it's so simple, but it's so divine. We're remembering that God was willing to create us, give us free will, and then come and die for us so that we could live eternally for him. And we have a command as he instituted this Lord's Supper to remember him when we do this. So as we partake of this bread and the fruit of the vine, I would ask that we follow that command, that we would remember him and put away all the earthly wisdom and just know through all the study that you will come to that it's all about being obedient to God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to come before you. Lord, it's hard for us to understand how you would be willing to create us, take on the form of a man, and die for us. But we are so thankful that you did. Lord, as we remember that, as we remember your body that was on the tree, that was wounded for us, Lord, we ask as we protect this bread that we would reflect on you and discern that body. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we again approach your throne, mindful of the blood that was shed, the blood that gives us cleansing of sins. Lord, as we take this fruit of the vine that re reminds us of that blood, we again ask that we would reflect on you and your love for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Hosanna, you're my king. I worship and I sing. I lift your holy name. telling me why he chose his church he said you know there's a lot of churches that just don't know what they do for the community or involved it just seems like they're just isolated in silos and I thought you know I've, I've been a part of that and, and I understand it and that's one thing about Trenton Cross and I love and I feel like as it says in Matthew that we are the light of the world and our light is shining and by that the world can see our good works and glorify our God in heaven. And this is our opportunity to, to support some of those good works that we do at Trenton Crossing. So I'd ask you to reflect on this as, as our part of our worship towards God. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all your physical blessings that you've given us, Lord. We're very rich. But Lord, we know that all our blessings are truly in our spiritual gifts that you've given us in our hope of eternal life. Lord, as we have opportunity to give back to you, we ask that we would do it with a generous heart. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Lord, make me a mentioned the uh, many good works that we do through this church. I'm so thankful for that. We're going to have two special contributions uh, before the year is out, and they're both reaching out. One's for World Christian Broadcasting, and the other is for the work of World Bible School as it tries to get the word into the hands of people uh, throughout this country, in prisons, uh, throughout the world. Right now, though, we're going to take up another contribution, and it's uh, maybe a little more inward focus, but it, it's focused on preparation for doing all of these good things. And so this money goes to a scholarship fund that's been in place for a, a number of years, and those funds will be used to uh, help uh, gr graduates who are going to institutions that are connected with Churches of Christ. And so I encourage you to give generously. If you can't give today, um, the, the fund remains. You can contact the office. You can give at any time through the year. But right now, uh, that's what we're going to be doing. And I just appreciate the way this church always rises to the challenge of special contributions uh, without fail and just excited about what may be happening in the next few moments. So let's bow. Our Heavenly Father, we continue to lift up your name. We thank you for your goodness, your greatness. We thank you for your word. Pray that we would always be a people of the word, that we would never be ashamed of the gospel because we know it's the power 
of, uh, of you, of your son, to salvation. Bless these funds that will be collected now. Uh, bless the, uh, the, the teachers who will be uh, instructing in lessons of life and lessons of Bible. Be with the students that will be using them. And we just pray for open and generous hearts at this time. And lift up, lift up this contribution in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Here's my church. Good morning. Quite a day. <laughs> Teach me, O oh Lord, to follow your decrees, then I will keep them to the end. Give me understanding, and I will keep your law, and obey it with all my heart. Direct me in the path of your commands, for there I find delight. If you will stand with me, uh, our next song is from the inside out. Jeffrey mentioned earlier it's printed on the inside of your order of worship. We, we did not have slides for this one. This is one uh, that our young people and those of us who, who chaperone them frequently know. We've worked on it on Wednesday nights in class, but we have not sung it out here yet. So we're going to let uh, Zoe Group lead us this morning. Uh, Denise is going to play uh, their recording of this. And please sing along with them as we sing from the inside out. We have a special class during the remainder of the hour uh, for ages three through kindergarten. That's out the doors to my right, and they can pass to that class as we're singing from the inside out. A thousand times I fail, still your mercy remains. And should I stumble again, still I'm caught in your grace, everlasting. Your light will shine when all else fades, never ending. Your glory goes beyond all things. You will above all else, my purpose remains. The art of losing myself in bringing you 
As I was uh, asked to speak on Senior Sunday, I immediately thought of one of my favorite books that I um, that relates well to this, and it's Oh, the Places You'll Go by Dr. Seuss. If you haven't read the book, I recommend it. It is uh, quite funny and a good way to look at this transition that we go through when we leave from being under our parents and we leave from being in this certain role to a new role. And I want to start today with a quote from that book. You have brains in your head. You have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. You are on your own and you know what you know. And you are the one who will decide where to go. Your family, the youth group, the church have prepared you for this moment. They have taught you, guided you, and steered you until now. They have helped you put brains in your brain and feet in your shoes. And they have taught you how to steer yourself any way you choose. This idea, though, of now that I go from having my parents and everything else in place to being on my own and having to choose the direction I go can be extremely scary. Our role changes in this moment from being a role of following to a role of leading and going. Many of us face uncertainty of what, we, of what will happen when we leave the safety of this role. We also face uncertainty any time that our role changes, any time we go on to face something that is outside of what we know. We may know exactly how to fill our role that we currently have. We may know how to fill the role as a student. We may know how to fill the role as a young adult, as a parent, as a grandparent. Whatever place we are in, we may know that role and feel comfortable in that role. But whenever it's time for us to leave that role, we are always faced with this period of uncertainty, this period when we are scared of what will happen next. What will I do? How will I succeed in that moment? And when I think of people who had to shift roles and had to change, I think of one of my favorite characters, Gideon. And so I'm going to be reading from Judges 6, verses 11 through 16. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth at or Fora, and which belonged to Joash the uh, Aberazite, while his son Gideon was beating out wheat in the wine press to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, O mighty man of valor. And Gideon said to him, Please, my Lord, if the Lord is, uh, said, Please, my Lord, if the Lord is with us, Why then has all of this happened to us? And where are all his wonderful deeds that our fathers recounted us, saying, 
Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and given us into the hand of Midian. And the Lord said, or the Lord turned to him and said, Go in his might of yours and save Israel from the hand of Midian. Do not I send you? And he said to him, Please, Lord, how can I save Israel? Behold, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said to him, But I will be with you, and you shall strike the Midianites as one man. Gideon was faced with an abrupt change in role. His role had been to be a member of his father's house, to help in his father's house. He was helping create grain. He was helping do the chores. He was helping just be a member of the house. All of a sudden, the angel of the Lord appears to Gideon and says, your role is greater now. Your role changes at this moment. You no longer are just a member of your father's house, but your role is now to save my people. I can only imagine how scared Gideon must have been. In fact, we see in the story how scared he is because he does not want to take on this change in role. He goes and he says, Lord, if this is true, I need a sign because I need to know that this is what you truly want. And the Lord gives him a sign. He says, yeah, that one sign, that may have just been a fluke. Can I get another sign? And the Lord says, absolutely. He says, I know what your role is going to be. And Gideon accepts his fate that this is truly what the Lord wants. But as Gideon goes and as he gets ready to take on this new role, he can do this in confidence because of what the Lord says. The Lord says, I am with you. I am with you. This isn't the first time that we see the angel of the Lord say this to his, one of his people as they change roles. When we look at Moses and the burning bush, the exact same statement comes from the Lord. He says, I am with you. This new role that Moses is getting ready to take on from being a farmer, raising these sheep out in the middle of the wilderness, to saving the people of Israel, the Lord is with him. The Lord is with him. It says, in fact, please, Lord, how can I save Israel? Behold, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the weakest in my father's house. And the angel of the Lord responds saying, I am with you. Today, Ali, you change, your role changes. You're no longer in the youth group. You're no longer in this small role of your family, but you are moving on to a new role. And with that new role, God is with you. God has provided ways for you. He has put brains in your head and feet in your shoes. And he has given you guidance so you can steer yourself in any direction you choose. You are your own. You know what you know. And you are the one who will decide where to go. Today, as we celebrate your change in role, remember that God is with you. For any of us that are going through changes in our roles, remember, God is with us. Today, as we finish up, if there's anything that we can do for you, if there's any way we can help, please come forward as we sing. Break my heart, dear Lord, ten a beggar son, show me in convicting tears, the
Kurt. I want to welcome you here this morning if you're visiting with us. Maybe here to be with Allie and her special day, which we're so happy for you. We'll speak about that a little bit more in a moment. But if you're visiting for the first time, we have a welcome center over to my left that we'd like to uh, visit with you a moment, get to know you better, and have an opportunity to share some things with you. We have uh, several on the prayer list this morning. I want to remember, first of all, um, all of our homebound members and all those who can't be with us in person each week. We want to continue to lift them up in prayer as we think about them and all the uh, years they've been with us as part of our family here. Also, Amy Williams, we will be having surgery tomorrow to repair a torn rotator cuff, I believe, right, Cindy? And uh, Virgin Mallory is now home after a brief stay in the hospital. We've got a lot of conflict going on in our world, and um, all of the military and the people who are serving in that capacity want to keep them in prayer as they have a, a tough job at hand. In speaking to uh, Cassie this morning, I understand that uh, Charlie may get to come home sooner than later, and hopefully that'll be within the next uh, short period of time, so we want to keep him in prayer. And we'll remember all of our frontline workers and all those that are um, doing those type of jobs and all that they face as well. Let's pray at this time. Father, we come to you again this morning just remembering this day um, is all about you, but as we take time to also observe Allie as uh, she's entering into a new chapter of her life, I want to remember her. But Father, um, so many that are on our prayer list, and each that we have mentioned, there are many others that you know and that, that we pray for each week as we meet together as the elders. And Father, we just lift up to you those needs and those thoughts, and we just know that you're the... Um, healer and provider for all things. And we just pray your comfort would be each of these needs and that you'd be with each of these families. And Father, we want to remember you as we lift these up to you and ask your blessings to God direct and lead us back to you at each week that we come together. In your name we pray, amen. Who's been your favorite youth minister since you've been in <laughs> Madison Street and Train Crossing? Is this recording? This is recording. Okay. <laughs> you can't put me on the spot like that. Choose your words wisely. You can't put me on the spot like that. Come on. I have hesitant. loved all my youth ministers and people that have been leading me equally. Stay out of my head because it's dangerous. And I don't want to lose my mind, no. Where have you seen someone's faith in action? So I think specifically this year, I've seen a lot of people, especially my family and people at church, they've been praying for me um, to find the right college to go to. And I've, I've really seen that. And it's just been amazing to see how diligent they've been in praying for me. And I think I've really seen their faith shown through that. I used to lay low, hiding in the shadows. So don't give me dark days, I already had those. I'm just trying to figure out. How to be myself right now I don't want to lay low Hiding in the shadows So I wake up I get out of bed Stay up Stay out of my head It's dangerous I don't want to lose my mind No What's the
the funniest thing that you remember about your brother? The funniest thing I remember is I was in middle school and he was, I think, a junior in high school. And at the time, we rode the bus together. And I was always an early riser. I would get up an hour before we had to leave. And Andrew would always wait probably like five minutes before we had to leave to get up and get ready. Uh, so I tried to, you know, get him to go because we had to catch the bus at a certain time. Um, and I finally got him out the door and we were at the top of our street and we saw from afar the bus pulling off without us. So my brother turned to me and said, come on, let's go run and catch it at the next stop. And I was so surprised. I was like, are we seriously going to sprint and run to the next stop? And yeah, we did. He carried my trombone for me and everything. He's actually really sweet. But um, yeah, when we got on that bus, we were panting and red-faced, but we caught it. So <laughs> thank you, Andrew. <laughs> for all of the young kids in the congregation today. To your peers who are, have grown up with you by your side, how would you encourage them in their life as they're watching you transition into college? I would say always have a good support system of friends around you. I've always been told that you are who you hang around. You're a mixture of the three closest people to you and I think that is so true and I think that if you have good genuine people around you then I think everything in your life will go smooth for the most part um, and I think just staying involved in church activities and school activities and just hanging out with your friends and family and just continuing to build those strong relationships um, I think that's so important and I I, I just think that has been the best thing for me um, when I've gone through really hard times or I've um, been struggling in some way spiritually or mentally um, or even physically. Um, I've always had my friends and family around to support me and that is, that's what kept me, keeps me going and I think that's the most, one of the most important things that you can have. Um, and just continuing to um, do your work in school and stay diligent in that because it, it really does it does matter in the long run and it will help you um, in life after high school and even if you do decide not to go to college um, I think it still builds work ethic and I still think that it's really important so okay. Thanks. <laughs> <Good advice. laughs> so this is two questions in one what do you look forward to when you come to church and what is your favorite thing about it so I really look forward to the singing every Sunday. Um, I always love hearing Frank Walton sing. Um, I think he has such a beautiful voice and I think all of our worship leaders have such great voices and they're such great leaders. And I love all the songs that we sing and I think I really grow closer to God in those moments. Um, so I think that's what I really look forward to at church and I think that's probably my favorite part of church is singing and also coming to Sunday school and hearing the lessons because I really think those spaces are really intimate and I think that um, my faith really grows in those kinds of spaces, so, yeah.
What's your favorite memory with your dad? With my dad. Okay. Let's see. Um, I think I really remember us going to Holiday World as family one year, and he spent a lot of time and money to win me this huge dog stuffed animal from, I think, um, the game where you throw a ball out of like those little clowns. So he spent a lot of time winning me that, and I was so happy about it. And I just, I thought that was just so sweet that he would spend all that time and money to get me that. And I also, um, I will always have fond memories of us going to the daddy-daughter dances. Um, he would take me that almost every year when I was younger, and we have lots of pictures and memories, and I always love dancing with him. Um, so I, I'll always remember that. What trait of your mom would you like to carry on? The trait that my mom has, she is a very kind and caring person at heart. I, throughout my whole life, I've always seen her truly care for others and love others deeply. And that's something that I have always looked up to her and um, that I'll always carry with me throughout my whole life. What do you consider a blessing in your relationship with your grandparents? Um, with, on both sides, um, on my mom's side and my dad's side, my, my grandparents have always been, they've lived near me, and so we've always had family get-togethers, we've had dinners, birthday parties, um, on Mother's Day, Father's Day, Christmas, Thanksgiving, every occasion that we can, we get together, and that's something that I'll always cherish. I'm just spending that quality time with um, both of my grandparents on both of my sides of my family because, um, you know, I just, I love spending time with them and hearing stories about how they grew up and looking at old pictures of them when they were younger and I just, I really do cherish those times with them. Um, I just want to thank this whole congregation from Madison Street to Trinity Crossing. They, I've grown up with these people. I've. Um, see how they've prayed for me, how they've encouraged me through um, a lot of parts of my life, a lot of parts of my family's lives, and um, all these people around this congregation is so kind and caring, and they truly, we truly love each other, and I think they truly love the community around us, and they've always been a helping hand, they've always reached out, and I think that is just that's truly something you can't find a lot of places, and this congregation has that, and that is something that I will really miss about this place. So, thank you for everything. <laughs>
A lot of stuff has been happening, and it's just been happening fast. I want to take a minute to be still with you. To surround you in prayer. To let you feel the love of the people that have poured into you in the same way that you've expressed it of how you felt them pouring into you these years. Because now it's our responsibility to send you out. And we want to send you out prepared, at least to the, to the best ability that we can, so that all of these things will mold you and shape you, and, and ultimately we really want you to go clo- grow close to Christ. Put him first in all that you do, just like we were mentioning this morning. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. I don't know why I cry every time I talk. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him. In all your ways, always acknowledge him. Anything that you do, anything you create, it's because God's given you the ability to do that. We will always be here for you. You will always have somebody praying for you. And if you need to come back during the week for a meal, there will be food here. I can guarantee it. (laughs) But we love you. We're proud of you. We're excited for you. And you're going to do great. But at this point... We want to present you with, with a sword that's going to carry you through school. We want to give this to you, and we, we want, it's one of a kind, it's custom made, I'm telling you. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you fall in love with it. And I hope it just, it pours into you the way that it's poured into us. And we just want to just let God work through us into you so that when you're at Belmont, you can be the light of the world down in Nashville. And you've got the ability and the talent to do that. I would like to invite everyone to stand, if you could. And I'd like for you to join hands with the person next to you. And if there's an aisle, I encourage you to join hands with the person across the aisle. And if you can, move as close to Allie as you can. You don't all have to move, but just move towards her because we want to surround her with prayer and with love and encouragement this morning. Mark. She's going to lead us in prayer. I want to hand you this Bible. Yeah, I can't see anymore. All right. (laughs) Allie, a lot's been said about you this morning. And as I watched that video, I thought, that's a mature young lady, the way she's responding to the questions. And you've... um, you know, I remember you from here, or maybe even smaller than that, all the way up to what you are now. You're going to be fine. I do want to leave you with these words. There will be some struggles in life, as it happens to all of us, but Philippians 4, 6 through 7 are some great verses to reflect on. And it says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Lean on him, as we have said this morning. We love you. We'll pray. Father, we come to you again this morning. Thank you for all the inspiration that's been given to all of our young children all the way through youth and beyond the years, and especially to Allie at this time as she embarks the next chapter of her life as she goes off to Belmont and we know that it'll be a change but a good change we know that you'll be with her and Father we pray also for her family especially for Kelly and Jennifer and Andrew as they will uh, miss her but know that she will return back and she will come back and show gratitude and love to them as well for all they've done for her and Father we look forward to seeing her she comes back to visit here at the church and we wrap our arms around her as we do in prayer each day and i pray this for all of our children from young all the way up through our youth and beyond and i pray your blessings to continue to be with us and be upon your church here at trenton crossing in your name we pray amen just remain standing we'll this is a, a song of prayer comes right straight from the scriptures and it's a a tradition that we do when our young people graduate from high school.